One big thing this week, uh, early this month, Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman announced priorities for research, development, and innovation sectors, so RDI for short, in the kingdom. Citing a 20-year framework, these RDI sectors, research, development, and, and innovation, uh, are slated to prioritize health, environmental sustainability, leadership and energy and industry, and future economies. So four sectors that they're slated to really prioritize. Um, a notable aspect of this initiative is that a standalone research, development, and innovation authority, RDIA, has been established. The RDIA is intended to, quote, act as an enabler, legislator, and regulator, and to develop moonshots, a phrase I really like, flagship programs, projects, budget distribution and performance monitoring, unquote. The person heading up the Research Development and Innovation Authority is Dr. Munir al Dasuki, who is also president of the King Abdulaziz City for Science and Technology, CAXT, leading, leading institution, does a lot of great work. Um, and he had a number of interesting things to say in a recent interview with the National newspaper, including that the RDIA plans to rely heavily on open innovation in science, including the launch of programs for special residency arrangements to attract scientists from around the world and make it easy for them to migrate to the kingdom. Quote, the research talent pool is going to need to increase by seven to eight times. There will be a special track under the innovation policy to attract VCs, investors, and potential future Nobel laureates, among others. They're part of our family and community. We aren't constraining it to citizenship programs. We have extended residency programs for entrepreneurs, VCs, and investors. Um, and <clears throat> continues, quote, for the first time in the kingdom, we have a center of government alignment on these kinds of plans, research, development, and innovation. The Ministry of Energy has its own plans. NEOM has futuristic plans, be it the Oxagon or the line, but we need alignment on all of them from national or international players to be able to solve the challenges, unquote. Um, Dr. Suzuki continues, we have 400 stakeholders, including SABIC, Aramco, every ministry, local and international partners, and we work with all of them, unquote. Um, Dr. Aldasuki noted that in the past, it's been difficult to link academia to the private sector, startups, and SMEs. And according to Dr. Aldasuki, quote, the pull side was missing. And, and a lot of the big companies that do R&D found it easier to do it abroad. We are fixing all these policies and working with the private sector to help make it easier for them through tax rebates or subsidies or incentives, incentives unquote. Uh, the RDIA strategy should be announced by the end of the year. Uh, with details, he said, I've already put in a, a, a plug to have Dr. Aldasuki join us on the 966. Maybe it'll be later after they do the strategy, because this is really interesting. And it's a notable effort, you know, to align government regulatory frameworks in the private sector to create a more attractive environment for research, development, and innovation. What is super cool about this, Richard, is that this is not just a piecemeal approach. It's not one thing or just a bunch of different things. This is sort of the unification of many different things under one large long-term strategy. And um, and I'm so glad that you chose this as, as your one big thing this week, uh, because we'll be shortly getting to an interview with a, a VC, um, Ead Al Bayouk, which is just a great conversation. And this is sort of in that space of innovation, entrepreneurship, um, technology, and really two great quotes um, from Dr. Eldasuki in this uh, piece from The National, which is really good. We recommend it. Um, the first is scientists want more than just a place with good tech or funding. They want to be in a place where innovation can take place. And we aim to make Riyadh the innovation hub by launching these programs. All the challenges we are facing are global challenges, be it sustainability to food security, um, et cetera. And then he says this dedicated budget and commitment from central government was what every researcher in the kingdom was dreaming of. And I think that that is really, really cool and interesting because they're essentially saying what we need here is a big strategy, top-down strategy with Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman at the top overseeing it all. And essentially all of these things need to work together toward one goal, which is 20 years in, in the future of 2.5% of GDP being contributed by this program um, alone. But I think it's just like really what they're doing here is saying, look, let's let's not start from scratch, but let's take a full scale look at what we're doing here and bring it all together so that everybody's cooperating. There are no um, 
you know, lanes between these different ministries and companies and VCs. It's just everybody working together. Um, and I think uh, this is a really, really interesting, and it's going to be very interesting to see this full plan reveal at the end of the year, as you mentioned. Yeah, and uh, I agree. It's uh, trying to put a uh, structure to a goal, <clears throat> which is always hard to do. So it'll be interesting to come out. But the 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 intent is admirable, and it trying to avoid smokestacks where you know some one person is doing one thing, another person doing another thing. And there might be synergies if everyone's involved, and and um, it's a it's it's a really interesting initiative, and um, I think it's interesting that it's placed sort of it's not necessarily in caxed, but uh, you know, it's it's a serious. It looks the RDIA looks like it's going to be an empowered, serious entity, and that's uh, that's critical to achieving anything in this in this sector. What we just uh, what we just talked about, Richard, um, is kind of the essence of Vision Twenty Thirty. I mean, there is diversification away from oil. The way to do that is innovation, entrepreneurship, having a unicorn or two come out of Saudi Arabia just completely out of the blue. I mean, that's how you're going to get non-oil exports and non-oil GDP to grow as much as you want it to grow in, in line, you know, to compete with oil exports going forward. So, And we'll be talking about some of the things MBS said about the line. And it was interesting, and I'll mention it uh, un unless it comes up previously, on your one big thing. Um, the very real intention to have a significant expatriate community. Um, yes. And that includes, you know, uh, scientists, entrepreneurs, uh, any kind of, uh, across STEM, you know, uh, which is what they prioritize, but just making an attractive place for people to come, uh, which is a bold move. This is Saudi Arabia, freaking Saudi Arabia. And, you know, they're putting their, they're throwing their hat in the ring, saying, come here and do your research here. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs>